Hey everybody, welcome back to Cheap Comic Collector. This is episode number 381, and according to my list, it will be a Sunday. Oh, it's the last day of June. Dang. Um, got quite a few things to share with you today, so I think we're going to go for about an hour. Hopefully I can get everything in, Um, because I need to clear some space here for the sale. I'm actually recording this on Friday night. Uh, so I have the claim sale in the morning on Saturday. Um, and it's actually June 7th. So I'm recording that far ahead of time. That's good. That's good. Again, I, I want to get like a month ahead. Uh, <clears throat> just so I have some leeway uh, with other things. If something comes up that I need to take care of. I mean, with, with that much of a leeway, I can go. I can take a week off and you guys won't even know it. So, <laughs> um, so we got, uh, I, I, I went to, uh, the collective in Altamont Springs. That's the comic shop, um, where I've been buying books on Sundays, whatnot streams, and I can do local pickups. So I don't have to pay shipping. Uh, so I go up there about once a month and pick up books. And, uh, so I got back yesterday and wow, what a bunch of great books. I'm going to. I'm going back and forth on what I should keep and what I should try and sell. <laughs> a lot of really nice, nice stuff in there. Um, uh, but also in my box was this, and I forgot to. Oh, you know what? Let me let me take you up top here because it's gonna record it backwards, and you won't be able to see it as easily. Let me zoom in nice and big on it. So yeah, that's actually a card from the collective, the comic shop. And what it was was on the live stream on, I think it was Labor Day weekend. Or was it Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, whatever it was. I don't know. Um, Memorial Day. It was Memorial Day weekend. What am I thinking? Um, anyway, they had an artist there that was doing commissions on the whatnot stream uh, besides doing the, the comic book sales. Um, so that was pretty cool. I didn't get a commission because I, I don't really do original art. Um, I, I don't want to spend that much money on something when I could, you know, buy 100 comic books. But um, when he wasn't doing it, working on commissions, he would just do a quick sketch on one of these cards and then they would do like give them away for a trivia question. So I won this one for uh, knowing the names of the seven dwarfs. And... Uh, I had to cheat a little bit, but nobody else was cheating. So, I mean, I knew the names. I couldn't think of the seventh dwarf. I couldn't think of of uh, Grumpy was the name that I couldn't come up with. And but I have the you know I I have the seven dwarfs all over my house. So I have like an office set. I have a big outdoor statue set that's on top of the bookcase. I have a couple of different figurines with all of them on it. So I wasn't I didn't have to look too hard to figure it out. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so I won this sketch, which is by uh, Sabian, uh, Willis T. Sabian. He's a Disney artist. Uh, he used to work at the parks. And uh, he's got a whatnot channel where he draws. And he's got a, uh, um, they were saying something about a comic book he's got coming out. But unfortunately, he they didn't have a mic on him, so I couldn't hear a whole lot of what the, he was saying. Um, but anyway, uh, it looked like he he's he 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 does some pretty good work. So, so I got this. That's cool. Really like it. Um, so thank you uh, for that, guys. And uh, I put it in this this holder because um, somebody else had sent me. A Spider-Man card not too long ago, but I'd much rather protect a piece of original art than I would a mass-produced card. So, uh, so yeah, I put it into this. So, very cool. I'm probably just going to stick it up on a wall or put a magnet on it or something so I can display it. But, uh, pretty nifty, pretty nifty. So, when I went up there to get my books, I had to wait, like, maybe 15 minutes because there wasn't anybody there to help me. Um, they've designated like a closet over in the warehouse to my books because they hold them for a month for me. And uh, uh, so I have like my own room in their warehouse kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And but there was only one girl working in the store. The owner had stepped out, so I had to wait for him to come back. So yeah, you can't leave me in a comic shop and not expect me to buy something. So um so I bought like sixty some odd dollars worth of new comics. Which I don't normally do, but these are almost all facsimiles. Um and as you know I will buy a facsimile if I don't have it of a new of a new one if it's I think it's rare enough or old enough or I actually want it or special enough. Some of the ones they come out with, it's like, that was just published, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I can still find those in the dollar bins. But but most of these are pretty cool. So we're going to go through these first. Um, we won't get to those books that I picked up today. It'll be quite a while before I get around to uh, showing those on the channel and, and, and putting them into the claims list because I've got so many books sitting here that before that before we get that far but uh but you're gonna like some of the stuff i got but you might not like that i decide to keep it <laughs> uh so first off we have the facsimile of flash 123 now when i was buying these i was afraid that there's a couple in here that i thought okay maybe i already have that one i'm not sure um, luckily, this is the only one that it turned out that I already had. Um, but rather than uh, putting it in uh, the claim sale, I, I'm going to go ahead and use it as a giveaway on uh, the stream I'm having tomorrow. So you, if you watch the Saturday claim sales, you'll have already seen this go. Um but that's what I'm going to do with it. So so that's for tomorrow. And then one of the new books I did pick up was this uh, Negative Space variant cover of The Ultimates number one. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Ultimate Spider-Man. I haven't looked at uh, The Ultimate X-Men. I'm, I'm one of the few people that don't really care for Peach Momoko's artwork in a comic book. I just don't feel the style. I just don't appreciate that style in a, in a comic. Um, but uh, I did like Ultimate Spider-Man. I kind of liked Ultimate Black Panther. Um, so I thought, what the heck? You know, I'm here. I'm getting stuff. I might as well grab this and uh, and see what's what. So it's actually... Um, so you know what? Let's do a, a what am I reading? Because <laughs> I did read this. It's, uh, so spoilers, I mean, this will be, it'll be three weeks after this came out, so hopefully if you wanted this, you've seen it already. If not, you might want to skip ahead, because I am going to talk about the story. Uh, it's done by, uh, Dennis Camp is the writer, Juan Frigieri is the artist, and they do a pretty good job. Um, you know, it's all based off of the, the Jonathan Hickman concepts i guess um but it starts out with iron lad and dr doom and thor's on the table bleeding out and sif used to be his guard or something and captain america's frozen in ice and i didn't quite know what was going on they explain it if you if you read this at the beginning and so forth it talks about you know this universe and so on and so forth but my mind kept jumping to the other avengers series like Adventures Twilight that's running right now because I read a few issues of that and it's kind of similar so my mind kept trying to connect it to that and I would get a little bit confused um but it's actually pretty good so they talk about the boxes like the one Spider-Man found and and how that you know to to develop the heroes that the maker or basically erased and uh, they try that, and, and it pretty much fails. And uh, so they go to recruit uh, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne. So that happens in this issue. A lot of talking to start with. Uh, there's Moloids that it's not against the the law, apparently, in this universe to kill Moloids. They're just they're considered vermin, like rats. Like you would call an exterminator to get rid of them if they're living in your basement. <laughs> So, uh, 
Um, that was a little interesting. Um, it was an interesting take. It was well written. Um, I just can't bring myself to pay this much money on a regular basis for new books. Now, the art is fine. Uh, the writing's fine. But they just cost too much. That's all there is to it. And uh, But this was a good start. So I will probably continue to read this online when I have the time. And uh, it was pretty good. So, yeah, I, I liked it. But for six bucks, eh, I could buy 12 comics for that. Yeah. Um, but they did have a, a couple of DC Connects and Marvel previews there. So I grabbed those as a, some freebies so I could look at and see what's coming up and what's coming out this month and stuff. Not Not much that I would actually be interested in buying. Um, was hoping for some better facsimiles maybe coming out in the near future, but didn't really see anything that, that uh, jumped out at me. And uh, the Marvels, I did have... Um, yeah, so this is the... Uh, going to be the Disney variant. What If variant on Amazing Spider-Man number 55. That's pretty cool. I don't like the fact that they put these on Amazing Spider-Man. I think if they're going to do an X-Men cover, it should be on X-Men. Um, and I just think it's weird that they put them all on Amazing Spider-Man, but I guess it's a promotional push for Disney more than anything, so they're probably putting it on what they know is going to be a, a good selling title. Um, and, uh, you know, it was fun looking through the artwork and, and so on and so forth, and, and, uh, I haven't looked through a new one of these to actually see what's coming up. Usually when I get them, they're months old and, and uh, you know, I, I have fun looking through them, but it's nothing. It's like, oh, that's coming up, you know. And uh, and then I wanted to show you this, too. This was the cover that just came out for 51. And then uh, this is actually a book, Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity Dime, number one, that's coming out from Marvel. Goes on sale June 6th, so it will have already been on sale by the time you see this. But this is the Alex Ross cover. They have a lot of uh, pretty uh, high-end, famous comic book artists working on that. Let me see if I can find the solicitation, because I think it showed quite a few of them in the solicitation for the issue. And you may have already seen these since it will have already happened. There's, here we go. So we got, uh, you know, the, these guys here. I'm going to try and hold it up so you can see it better, but since it's small. But uh, these are pretty awesome. Um, this is Peach Momoko. And so she does a pretty cool Uncle Scrooge. And then... Uh, you got these guys. This is Walter Simonson. Simonson. Oh, they got a Ron Lim cover here. Uh, Elizabeth Tork and Steve McNiven. And I'm pretty sure there were other ones. This one is this big one here. This is Lorenzo Prestrovicio. <laughs> and I think there was more than that, but, but that's what it's showing in there. So those are fun to look at. And then it was a Thursday when I picked them up. And Thursday is uh, they have some boxes there where you can dig through and pick out three free comics. So I actually uh, had to dig a little bit. You know, I looked through them, didn't see any. I only found two that I thought I wanted. Uh, but then when I decided to buy a bunch of uh, variants, I went back and grabbed three anyway. Because I'm like, well, if I'm going to buy something, I might as well, you know, get my money's worth and get some free books. So... Uh, so I got Zealot number one. I don't think I've ever seen this one come through, so I don't know if it has any value or if it's a rare. It probably doesn't, or it wouldn't have been in the box. But, uh, um, you know, I'm ending up with quite a few image titles uh, because most of them, you know, people aren't really that interested in. And uh, so I'm going to end up probably after I do 
like get around to building the original Valiant runs, which I'm working on now, I'll probably start um, maybe looking at Image or CrossGen or one of those publishers to try and put their books together. So, so I'll grab that one. Um, and this one I was excited about. This is Image First number one of Ice Cream Man. So it reprints Ice Cream Man number one. And Ice Cream Man is, is a series... Yeah, I've been looking at thinking, you know, there's a lot of hype about it. It sounds as like it'd be really neat, and I haven't got a chance to read it. So they had a, quite a few of these in there, three or four of these. And so I grabbed one so I could read it. Um, so I read this, and it is good. The writing in it is excellent. And it's a horror title and done very well. Um... They do swear a bit in it. There's some, some F-bombs in it. Uh, and uh, But it doesn't... It doesn't seem out of place, really, um, for the characters. I mean... I mean... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're words that people use, you know, so... Um, and... Uh, it's not there for shock value. It's there as part of the character, and that's just the way they talk, and and that's the way it should be written. Good writer, a uh, lot of fun, great series. Really, really enjoyed this first issue. Uh, it was written by W. Maxwell Prince, art by Martin Marazzo, and I mean the writing is just awesome. Very, very fun. Very fun. Uh, and then I grabbed a John Sable Freelance number 14. Didn't know which issues I had. Um, I do have this one. Well, that's why it's got this sticker on there. So this is going to go into the claim sale. Uh, so that'll be our first one from today that's going to go in the claim sale. Because obviously I'm not going to put these other books in there. Um, I mean, I guess I could put the, the freebies in there. But um, yeah, I want to keep them. <laughs> Uh, we got a facsimile of Detective Comics number 58. Um, not really sure why they they published this one. Maybe it's it might be the first appearance of the Penguin. He's featured in there. Pretty cool. But what actually caught my eye when I was paging through it was actually the, the backup stories. Uh, Spy... And um, uh, Larry Steele, Cliff Crosby. These are all characters I've never heard of. And apparently they had their own series you know, in early DC Comics. And like just like you know, Action Comics had a bunch of Speed Saunders, I've heard of him. Um, so... Uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, I thought I knew all the DC characters because of Crimson Avenger. I, I, I thought I knew Steve Malone, never heard of him, um, district attorney. And yeah, you know, because I had read Who's Who and stuff in the 80s, I thought I knew all the DC characters. But apparently they left quite a few Golden Age goodies out of that series where they were just detectives or whatever, you know, so Slam Bradley heard of him. He's shown up from time to time in modern stuff as well. So some, some interest that was interesting to me because I hadn't seen that before. Uh, then we got detective comics number four eleven, Batman and Batgirl. And Not real sure about this one. Why this one was done as a facsimile either. I should just should have just looked them up, but I mean it didn't matter. It's just an old issue of Detective Comics. That's good enough for me. <laughs> and Batgirl's got her own backup series, so it's not like it was her first appearance or anything. So. Uh... But anyway, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Who who wouldn't, you know, I mean, to get the stuff in this thing. And then we have ROM Space Knight, number one. But the facsimiles are great to get old issues, get an exact reprint. Just even with the ads and everything, I love them. Um, 
Now, the difference between the DC and the Marvels are is the DC will actually try and match the paper somewhat. I mean, this isn't newsprint. This is a heavier stock than that. Um, but it's close enough where it feels like the real thing, you know. Uh, Marvel, on the other hand, they just make everything slick. And I don't think... I don't think that does any wonders for the art. I think it actually, I don't think the art presents as well. Um, on the other hand, the cartoon ads look great. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's a facsimile. It's a, you know, it's an exact reprint of, of the uh, titles. It just, you know, they didn't use the, the same kind of paper. They use slick paper, and I'd, I'd rather have it be closer to what it actually was uh brave and bold 54 kid flash aqualad and robin so pre-teen titans this was like the tryout um they actually fighting mr twister who if you are a fan of the original titans you know is one of their foes and uh so this was like teen titans before they called themselves the teen titans basically just kind of a tryout issue that probably sold well enough where they decided to go ahead and create it as a team. Very cool. Uh, and then crisis on infinite earth number two. Um, I have the original, uh, so I didn't really need this one, but I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's white pages. It's brand new. It's, uh, yeah, if they're going to do this whole series, like one issue at a time, I'm I'm probably going to try and get all of them. Uh, Military Comics number one. Uh, I think that was the first appearance of Blackhawk. And, uh, of course, this was an old uh, quality comic. DC didn't actually own the characters back then, so... Uh, so I don't really have any idea what's in this one. I got uh, something called Loops and Banks of the Red Dragon Squadron. Uh, some kind of aviation or aviation strip, it looks like. Uh, the Blue Tracer. Not familiar with that either. Oh, kind of a science fiction type, it looks like. Uh, Archie Atkins, Desert Scout. Uh, definitely got some racial stereotypes in here. Uh, Shot and Shell. So I don't know if these are like one shots or if these are ongoing strips. I don't. I just don't know enough about this era and and the uh, quality comics. Uh, Yankee Eagle by John Stewart. Look at the look at the drawing of that ship. That's awesome. So this would have originally been what forties? Uh, yeah, nineteen forty two. This would have originally came out. Uh, Death Patrol. That's interesting. Just interesting as a name because it immediately makes you think of Doom Patrol. Um, Sabotage by Tex Blaisdell. And Miss America. I know her from the All Star Squadron. Her uniform. Uh. Text page with some illustrations. Oh, and there's a actually a guide to U.S. Army insignias. You know, like the stripes and stuff that they wear on their shoulders. That's kind of cool. Uh, Q-boat, Captain Foghorn, Bob, Dick, and Freckles. All right, so there you go. Very nice, very cool. And then uh, showcase number 22, introducing the Silver Age Green Lantern. 
originally published in 1959. So this is his origin story where he finds uh, Aben Sur crash landed. Very cool. And some more Marvel. Fantastic Four, number 52. Introducing the Black Panther. And again, Marvel does the, the slick pages, which, you know, it makes the advertisement stand out really nice, but it just looks weird on the artwork to me. <laughs> I guess because I read so much newsprint with them. I don't know. The older, the older art on the slicker paper, it just seems odd to me. It doesn't, doesn't feel right. And then um, there was also uh, the facsimile of the Uncanny X Men one thirty. Um. Introducing the Dazzler, of course, from uh, the X-Men, because, yes, she started out as an X-Men character, mostly. And that, in turn, convinced me to pick up this, which is actually Amazing Spider-Man number 51, but it's the Disney variant that spoofs this cover so i thought well that's that's a cool cool set to have right um you got mickey is cyclops down here daisy is phoenix donald is nightcrawler and minnie as the dazzler um and since you know cyclops and phoenix are a couple in marvel then i i guess in this alternate reality, then Mickey and Daisy are together? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> but I did read Amazing Spider-Man since it was a new issue. I wanted to see what it was like, what was going on. And, and I've seen some uh, talk about this character. I don't remember what she's called. I, I, I could read it. I could follow it. Um, but there were a couple things that didn't make much sense to me, like the fact that this is Spider-Man. You know, he's been deranged or something, or his mind's been switched. It's not real clear. Um, but the villains that he's attacking recognize this as being Spider-Man immediately. And that's just weird. I don't understand that. <laughs> But anyway, he takes out he takes pretty much them all out, and uh, uh, Miss Marvel has a little bit of a cameo in there, and uh, it's uh, you know the Avengers show up, but it's uh, 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 it's it's just a projection by Mysterio, and and so I mean it's pretty much a battle issue. I mean look, you only got like four panels per page, so there's not much story going on. The art's nice. Um, this guy shows up. I don't, since I'm not following Spider-Man, I don't know who that is. His name's Chasm. Doesn't know, it. doesn't mean a thing to me. Uh, and apparently, this is an updated version of The Living Brain. And the only reason I know that is because I read the introduction to the issue. Um, wouldn't have known that in story. And, uh... And I, I recognize that this is Curtis Connors because he only has one arm. <laughs> and they mentioned him earlier in the issue. Uh, just not a very, not much story there. Not, not not at all. And for five bucks or whatever I paid for it. Yeah, five bucks. 
I mean, I can eat lunch for five bucks. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It, it, it feels like these, these really should be 25 cents for what you're getting on some of them. But, uh, but the cover's cool. I am a Disney collector and I, and I've got this one to go with it. So it's, 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 uh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm happy with my purchases. I just, yeah, sometimes I, I guess I buy them and then I remind myself of why I don't collect the, the modern stuff or at least not at cover price. So, uh, let's see, what else are we doing today? We got trades. Yeah, we had, we traded with Josh. Um, so he sent some more great stuff. We're going to go through those real quick, hopefully. It's like, oh, wow, it's, I'm at 30 minutes already. We might not get through all the stuff I wanted to go through today. Um, in fact, we probably won't, unless I go extra long. Uh, well, we'll just save some for Sunday. Or Monday. This is this will be appearing on a Sunday. So, Oh, we got Sergeant Fury, number 105. Very cool. And 121. Great stuff. And then this was, uh, it's called 1111 by Bernie Wrightson. It's a one shot by Crusade Comics from 1996. And it's basically, you know, you, you got a prose story or something. Um, but you have these wonderful pencil, pencils. Uh, sketches by Bernie Wrightson. Just great stuff. So, very, very cool. Um, but when I was putting it into the... And in these, I'm keeping these, up, by the way, as you know, because I keep trades... Um, and uh, that's how I discovered it was just a one shot is, is uh, you know, when I listed it in my list, that's, there was only one issue. So, but very cool. Uh, Archie's Girls, Betty and Veronica, number 310. This one's from 1981. Uh, so just, you know, typical Archie 1980s. Some uh, fashion pages. Betty's getting a new hairdo. A couple new hairdos. Uh, Avengers versus Infinity. Number one. This is also a one shot. It looked like. Oh, it's from 2016. And I don't really know anything about this one either. I haven't read any of these, and it'll be quite a while before I ever get to them. Um, uh, the art's a little simplistic for my tastes, but not not terrible. I've seen worse. Um, the Hulk in a Hawaiian shirt is a little, little strange. Uh, yeah, so uh, and then Amazing Fantasy number two. This is a later series. The art in this is pretty impressive. This looks cool. Um, not sure, like. If this is supposed to be an alternate universe thing or what exactly is going on. You got Spider-Man riding a dragon and so on and so forth. So, uh, Very cool. Oh, that's a cool cover for the next issue too. For 2021 series, looks like a lot of fun. Uh, all new X-Men number 40. The Utopians, number nine, Mystique and Sabretooth on the cover, 
Number seven with Mystique and Cyclops on the cover. Age of Apocalypse, Back from the Dead. Number three. And I think the title is... Oh, yeah, Age of Apocalypse, number three. This is the one I was thinking of. This is actually... The entire title of this is Age of X-Men, Apocalypse, and the Extracts. So... Not sure if they're supposed to be a band or what. I don't know. I mean, his costume is just a t-shirt. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, we got Alien Legion number two from the second series. Azrael number one, 1995. Very cool. Adam Strange, number one, from the uh, 2004 series. I had number two, so now I've got one and two. I don't know. I get one for like six issues, something like that. Uh, Avengers Universe, number two. This was three issues. And this is reprints. This is just... Uh, but. Uh, what reprints, man? George Perez artwork throughout the entire thing. This reprints uh, Avengers 13, 14, and 15. So it's just uh, kind of reprinting those stories. And, you know, George Perez goodness throughout the entire thick, triple thick issue. <laughs> Just amazing. I'm always blown away by George Perez's artwork. Just amazing stuff. Uh, we got Batman Jazz, number two of three. Uh, Legends of the Dark Knight special. I thought I had some issues of this, but I don't. Apparently, they, uh, they got claimed because <laughs> they weren't in my list. Uh, I got Batman and Robin number five and number six from the new 52. This is a cool cover here. I like the blue background with the lightning bolt. It sets them off nice. Uh, Captain Marvel number three from 1996. And this, I believe this is a reprinting of the Courtney Crumrin number one from Oni Press. Um, this is the Courtney Crumrin number one, uh, square one edition, which just is just listed as a one shot on Grand Comics database, as opposed to the regular series. So I think this is just like a yeah a reprint that people can grab to get in on the story, kind of. Uh, looks pretty cool. Could be interesting. Uh, Civil War II, The Fallen, number one. This was a one-shot, and the actual title is just The Fallen, but, um, yeah, it's a Civil War II one-shot, basically. Uh, I got The Darkness, number one. This is volume three. Great cover. Um, Darkness and Witchblade are the two image covers that I think look the most interesting to me. I, I like the most of the artwork I've seen um, but I have never read any of it uh, so far. So just don't feel like I've got enough to start with, you know, but since this is a number one, maybe that'll work for me. Uh, even though it's like the third number one. <laughs> DC Universe Online Legends, number 20, Batman vs. Dark Knight. Uh, Deceased, number one. I know uh, a lot of people were into this. It's got these DC zombie infection or whatever. And uh, so 
you know, this is number one, great place to start reading it. Exiles number six, the mega-sized final issue. Um, so this wasn't the, the long ongoing series, this came later. Uh, this is number 11. I think this was the previous ongoing series. Uh, East of West, number two, from Jonathan Hickman. Um, some people were saying they liked this. Uh, artwork looks pretty decent in it. I know a few of these have gone through the sale. I think the majority of them were claimed, if not all of them. But... Uh, since it's a trade, I will keep this one and sooner or later give it a try. Marvel Age Fantastic Four number three. I think the Marvel Age Fantastic Four went for about, I'm thinking 12 issues. Uh, Secret Invasion Fantastic Four number three. This was the last issue of that miniseries, and that completes my set. So thank you, Josh. Thank you for all of these. Um, I'm probably not being appreciative enough because these are some great stuff. You've got a lot of number ones in here, a lot of holes filled in, in longer runs for me. I really appreciate the effort um, you go through in making the trades uh, be something, yeah, worthwhile for me and, and good stuff. So, this is the New Invaders Zero. Um, took a while to figure out this one out because it just lists invaders in the small print. Um, but it's actually listed in Grand Comics Database as the New Invaders Zero, which goes against their rules, but there it is. Uh, <laughs> Incredible Hulk, last call number one. Um, Looked like this was maybe a three-issue miniseries or so. Uh, but number one of that. Or maybe it was a one-shot. I don't I don't remember. Uh, Lobo Annual, number one. Um, not much of a Lobo fan myself, but... Uh, um, yeah, this will fit nicely into the uh, annual story line the bloodline storyline um i have no idea how close i am to finishing that i know i have a lot of the bloodlines annuals but i have i don't have a complete list or anything so i don't i don't i have no idea <laughs> and you got Sabretooth and mystique whose title is actually mystique and Sabretooth number two uh nova and this is number 13 i have no idea why there's a giant number one up here I mean, a lot of times they did that, and then it's like, in the smaller print or something, they'll say something about, you know, it, such and such begins here, like it's a storyline. And, uh, sorry guys, I got uh, bugs. <laughs> That's the second flying ant I've seen in the last... 30 seconds or so, and I got both of them, but I'm wondering where they're coming from. Might have to do some spraying in here. Have to get the comic books covered up first. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. I mean, why did they put a giant number one up here if it's number 13? Doesn't. Should be laws against that. There are laws against that. It's false advertising. Uh, the NAM, number 69. Uh, Punisher, Frank Castle in the NAM. Punisher invades NAM, part three of three. So these are, um, I think these are like the issues that people are looking for on these. So uh, he also sent Justice League Annual number one from 1987, which I got excited about, um, but then I realized I had it. And, uh, I don't have it listed. It's it's listed as Justice League International Annual in my list. And I don't know what the actual title is. It just says Justice League Annual number one. So I actually have it listed wrong. 
But I do actually already have this one, so that one's going to go into the sale because it is a pretty nice copy. Um, the corner down here is dinged up a little bit and it's got a couple of spine ticks, but other than that, it's very clean um, and very nice. Uh, new Suicide Squad number nine. Again, this is an issue that took me a little bit to to uh, figure out what it was because I missed the new up here. I just thought it was Suicide Squad number nine. And when I tried looking it up, nothing was matching for my list. Um, there's been a lot of Suicide Squad series. <laughs> uh, oh, this one was cool too. Somerset Holmes number five. Uh, I think this was the first Eclipse issue. I think it was published by somebody else before that. And um, so you got the the first story, Somerset Holmes, which I couldn't find any creator credits in here. Um, and so I'm not sure who did this. There's there's parts of it that look kind of like Mike Grell to me, but I wasn't sure. And so I was trying to find credits in here, and I couldn't find any credits. And that is weird, especially for an Eclipse Comics. Um, now, the backup story, that's a different story. Uh, a Pacific Serial, Cliffhanger is the name of the, the series. This is Chapter 5. It is done by uh, Bruce Jones and Al Williamson, and it looks amazing. Look at this art. This is just fantastic. Um, so that looks like fun a lot of fun and, and look they tied her to the railroad tracks <laughs> they tied her to the railroad track <laughs> and uh, so yeah that's just cool it's just I thought it was so weird that I couldn't find any any credits for the first part um, even uh, even in their little uh, editorial here, where they talk about uh, what's coming out that month, they don't say who's who, who's they don't credit the uh, creators. So that's odd. Well, I got Ultimate X Men number four. I do. I was looking when I was adding these to these to the list. I realized that I have quite a few issues of Ultimate X Men. Um, I guess people haven't been claiming those in the sales. There's number 55, um, as I do have quite a few of those. Ultimate Comics X-Men, which came later. This is number five. Uh, Ultimates 3, number two. And number three... Ultimate Extinction, number two. Warlock, another number one. And we got some Walking Dead. We have Walking Dead, number one. This is the 15th anniversary retailer edition. Whatever that means. <laughs> So this isn't the original number one. This is just uh, some kind of reprint for the 15th anniversary. And there's another ant. What is going on? And why are they flying ones? That's weird. All right. Uh, Walking Dead number 192. This one looks also like it's a reprint or something because it says it's the Walking Dead 192 special commemorative edition but it looks also looks like it's dated for the same year that the normal 192 would have come out so um i don't know i don't know enough about the walking dead as a series i did read the, like the first 100 issues online when it when they came out um and they were fun um oh i guess because this character died because he was a major character right so they made a commemorative edition. So maybe it's just an alternate, uh, like a variant 
of the regular version or something. And so that's what I got from Josh. Thanks, Josh. Um, really, really some great stuff in here again. I mean, you got those Sergeant Furies, and I love Sergeant Furies. And uh, a lot of number ones and starts to series and things and finishing up some other series for me and, and uh, you know, some one shots so I can actually read them and just, just amazing stuff. Thank you so much for this trade. And I just, uh, yeah, let, let's keep going. I'm, I'm always happy to get your trades in. Uh, uh, next up, I was going to save these for last, but I have a feeling we're not going to actually get to my other box that I was going to do today. So uh, I'll show you these. This one came in. From Hans Schumacher, whose YouTube name escapes me at the moment, <laughs> and I'm subscribed to them. And anyway, these are the amazing Spider Mans I got um, when we were all raising money for Maranya. Um, I bought these uh, to help out and. A lot of you may be like, oh, but Rob, you're the cheap comic collector. What are you doing? Um, and it all depends on how you look at it, guys. Because I look at it like I got these as free. As a gift. Because I was going to donate that money anyway. And uh, there's another ant. Where are these coming from? Uh, Ant-Man. Ant-Man is attacking me. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, so, so I, I kind of look at these as just a bonus because I was, I was going to donate the money and then they, they came up with these. I was looking at, I was eyeing the guy that was doing the, the original art and I th almost pulled the trigger on that. But then I figured somebody was going to be showing comics and I wanted to see what they had, you know, because all those guys have such great comics, I figured there'd be something to something that I could grab onto. So uh that's the way I look at it. And he threw this in. Uh, it's called Ditko Mania number 96. It's a little fanzine about Steve Ditko. Uh it's from 2018, number 294 of 300. And this was apparently the first issue after Steve Ditko's death. Uh, and yeah, it's just a, a neat little uh, fanzine thing. Very professionally done. And, uh, I really liked it. And then, you, you, you know, you look going through here and you're looking at all this amazing artwork and stuff and thinking, okay, I got to read this because there's a lot of, looks really neat, right? And, and stuff. And then you get to the back and you see this and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you flip it over and you see this and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. That's awesome. Now this says it's uh, got a Jay McPherson uh, name on there. So I assume that's done by whoever that is. Not Steve Ditko. But um, but that's amazing. Look at that. That is cool. Um, so that's supposed to be Starman? I'm not sure. I, I'm not familiar enough with, with that costume. I don't... For me to know who these this character is it's the same same guy in the front same guy here so and this is mcpherson as well it'll probably tell me when i read through all this uh star guider oh wait here we go this issue focusing on starman yeah okay so that's starman So very cool. Um, this will be a, a lot of fun to uh, to go through. I like uh, I like these kind of uh, things. 
So anyway, let's get to this comics. We got Amazing Spider-Man number 34. Look at that. Very cool. Um, this is the only one I've actually opened and taken a look at. Um, and he puts these... Uh, Yeah, I hope those aren't termites. Those might be flyers for termites. Sorry, I just saw another one. There he is. I gotta do the show in here tomorrow, too. <laughs> All right, well, I'll spray in here tonight and hopefully I'll take care of it. But he puts these in here to uh, take out any contaminants or whatever that might, might be in there. Um... And uh, I don't know if I, I actually want to go through these and read these because they're they seem quite delicate and they're in decent shape, but they're they it seems like it would be easy to accidentally tear one or 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 something. And I can read these stories, you know, all over the place. So um, I think I'm just gonna leave them in the bags and, and enjoy them, enjoy having them. As opposed to uh, um, these are these are ones where I actually will read them. He's got two backing boards in here. Oh, I see. He used to have it in this backing board, but he needed to put it in a new one. But he had the information on the back of the board, so he just stuck the old board in the new bag with the new backing board. That's a cool way to do it. Um, so yeah, we got number 34, number 48 with the vulture. Look at that. Number 56 with Dr. Octopus. Uh, number 58 with J. Jonah Jameson as the Spider Slayer. Or 74 with uh, uh, who was this guy? Silvermane, I think. Is that that's just you know, great Romita covers. Uh, got Amazing Spider Man 102, second appearance of Morbius with the lizard. Um, they spelled they misspelled Morbius, it's it's spelled Moribus. On the cover um, and uh, just amazing books dr. strange life that's that's I think that's what his name is let me let me check that real quick I don't want to miscredit anybody. Oh, but he has a great channel that you should all be subscribed to. He does a video every now and then with some awesome stuff on it. And yeah, one of those guys that has, I mean, I know you. a lot of you guys think I know a lot. Um, it's nothing compared to what some of these guys, other guys know. Nothing at all. And I messed that up. Let me let's try again. <laughs> Where are my subscriptions? There it is. Sorry guys, it's just taking a minute for me to remember how to do this and get my subscriptions in in order that I can remember them. Captain Strange Life, that's his name. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I was thinking it was Doctor Strange Life. It's not. It's Captain Strange Life. Yeah, Doctor Silver Age and Captain Strange Life. 
So yeah, Captain Strange Life is who I got these from. He gave these up to help Marania, and uh, I was happy to get a hold of them. Just amazing things. Um, yeah, Aaron and I were talking the other day about uh, what a great rogues gallery Spider-Man has, and they don't. Uh, they just don't seem to know what to do with them. <laughs> they keep trying to focus on Peter Parker and and his story's kind of done. You know, he can't really evolve anymore unless they're going to have him get married and have kids or whatever again. Um, so uh, they need to focus more on the rogues gallery and uh, and they've done that as well, but not. Not to the point where they've actually developed a storyline for them. They're just bad guys who show up and fight Spider-Man, you know, um, for the most part. I mean, occasionally they've done something like the, you know, Craven's Last Hunt and stuff like that that has been amazing. But you know, it's been a long time since there's been a good Spider-Man title um, that's just blowing everybody away. That's a, actually Peter Parker and not an alternate universe thing, you know, but... Uh, but anyway, happy to have these. Thank you so much, uh, Captain Strange Life. And thank you for this as well. I'm actually a little bit more excited about this because I didn't know this was coming. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very cool. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you tomorrow. And i got to figure out where these ants are coming from. See you soon.